I had a job lined up out in LA, a place to live out there with guys from, uh, from Karen. And it just didn't work out. I went to Nashville, met a Calvary Chapel pastor down there. It was like a 10 person church. And he had done music his whole entire life. He's like 35 years. He was in the industry, dropped out of high school. And uh, I'm like, I'm down here to see if I could find music. And he's like, the best piece of advice I could give you, because I've been in this industry my whole life. <clears throat> he's like, go home. And I'm hey. like, what? Uh, go home? And he's like, yeah. He's like, go home. If you want to do music, do it in your area, man. He's like, there's yeah. so many places. Nashville's a 10-year town. Like, you have to build up rep and rapport to get noticed down here. And I'm like, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. What is up everyone? Welcome back to Studio One. Today, I have a special guest, Josh Wentz. What's going on? What's Let's going clap on? for Josh Wentz. The little bit of people here. <laughs> Dude, how you doing? I'm good, how about yourself? I know we were, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. I know good. we were We were catching up a little bit, but um, how was your drive over? How was, how was everything? Drive over was nuts. We were just talking about the rain. It's the rainy Westchester, Pennsylvania. And it's rough. Yep, traffic it's, was crazy. It's one of those days. I wanna have you back um when it's nice and sunny yeah i'll show you around the town a little yeah. bit yeah we'll hit some fun yeah. stuff up yeah there's a lot of it's it's definitely growing a little bit and developing yeah. around here a little more so it's yeah. definitely a popping place in the summer sweet let's I love do it that. dude Absolutely. that's great um all right so josh wentz not not related to carson wentz at not all related too no. short no too short but <laughs> <laughs> way too short but um tell us a little bit about yourself um i want to hear a little bit about either just your life in general, your musical upbringing, whatever that is. Yeah. Start from the beginning of that. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm I, Pennsylvania born and raised. I grew up in Telford and you grew up in the Harleysville. So yeah. we we're always very close to we're each close. other. We did One not meet until college though. Yeah. Didn't meet till college. You know, it's like I didn't know you until that point, but we were always close. I uh, grew up in PA. Um, I'm one of three siblings. I have two sisters and two awesome parents. And yeah, I've been living here my whole entire life. And been doing music for my entire life and started when I was in third grade. I picked up cello. That was the first thing. Switched over to trumpet for a little bit. And I was like, nah, I'm not doing this. This, is, this isn't working out for the me. The strings. You want to say the strings? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, let's say something that doesn't involve my mouth and a horn or anything like that. So stepped away from that. Ended up going into homeschooling. I was homeschooled for yeah. two years. Now, I'm not like the crazy homeschooler or things, like, you know. Yeah. But I was He's homeschooled normal. for... He's normal, yeah, I'm a normal person. <laughs> Everything's cool, okay? Um, yeah, I was homeschooled for, for two years and was that early like, in your high school, yeah. early, like middle school, high school. Yes. Yeah, so that was fourth and fifth grade. Okay. So I came back to public in sixth, but during that time, my mom's like, Hey, if you want to do music, like we should try that out again. Cause sports wasn't working out. I'm only five, five. I'm a small guy. So clearly athleticism and sports <laughs> is not my thing. So she's like, let's get you into music. You're really good at music and art. And I hadn't played cello for a few years at that point. Right. So I was like, okay, let's do lessons. And she, you know, got me set up with some woman and she's like, your son's got something. And if he hasn't touched this instrument in two years, he's picked everything up like in a day. So she kind of like picked up on that. And uh, yeah, she's like, okay, we need to, we need to flourish this. Let's get him, you know, doing music. So I stuck with cello and basically carried that into high school. Uh, that was like my primary instrument, as you know, it was my primary instrument in college. Yeah. I barely do anything with it now. <laughs> like I... I've got like tattoos and listen to pop music. I'm like, I'm not going to be in, in an orchestra at all. Um, but in early in high school, I started getting exposed to like worship music. Mm -hmm. I go to Calvary Chapel, Central Bucks. We've been going there for almost 15 years at this point. And uh, I had a guy named Chris and he's like, hey man, if you want to play music, take my slot. And he was our youth pastor. And uh, Sunday mornings, it was like the junior high. So it was like, a, it was a small thing, but it was a huge step in like developing, you know, other instruments being a multi-instrumentalist and stuff like that so i was leading worship on bass like that was the thing that i did at the time <laughs> dude it's like some yeah. skill advisor yeah yeah <laughs> and then uh i started learning i'm like well i gotta learn guitar because i like this yeah. so i might as well pick up guitar so i was doing that and uh in bass like early high school and then i got involved with marching band and indoor percussion and drumline started taking jazz lessons for percussion doing you know competitive jazz and stuff like that so I was just like constantly picking up new things and not putting it down. And today, guitar is like the most yeah. you know used instrument in my arsenal. But I've never been like classically trained. Everything else that I have like classical training on, I barely <laughs> touch anymore. Um, so yeah, did music my whole life. Went to Karen University with you. Yeah. Um, studied worship and music and stuff like that. And 
I had no desire to work in a church at all. Like I wanted to do music full time. I wanted to, you know, go out to Los Angeles or go to Nashville. Oh, yeah. I tried to go to CMC. I was like, Dude, did you? I tried to fill out the application oh, for it. I so got dope. accepted. Yeah, because we would have been there at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like courses and stuff weren't working out. And uh, so you, you would have honestly, you would have thrived, I know, dude. I I dude, know I would have loved dude, it to, so much. Have, it been we good. need to go to Nashville together. I would, yeah. I went, I went after. I think it was right before COVID. I went with a couple of my friends. I'm like, I have friends down here. They have, you know, they're on record labels and stuff like that. I want to find work. So, um, I was going out between there and Los Angeles. I had a job lined up out in LA, a place to live out there with guys from uh, from Karen, and it just didn't work out. I went to Nashville met a Calvary Chapel pastor down there. It was like a 10-person church. And he had done music his whole entire life. He's like 35 years. He was in the industry, dropped out of high school. And uh, I'm like, I'm down here to see if I could find music. And he's like, the best piece of advice I could give you, because I've been in this industry my whole life. <clears throat> he's like, go home. And I'm Dang. like, what? Uh, go home? And he's like, yeah. He's like, go home. If you want to do music, do it in your area, man. He's like, there's yeah. so many places. Nashville's a 10-year town like you have to build up rep and rapport to get noticed down here and i'm like okay that's what i'm gonna do so i went home got in uh into coffee we can talk about that more later i'm a huge coffee snob now oh we gotta okay um, i'm gonna put that on here we yeah, gotta talk about coffee we can talk about coffee later i worked at a coffee top shop for two years and and loved it and then ended up transferring and uh started working for my my home church, Calvary Chapel. Didn't want to work in a church, but my yeah. degree and all that kind of stuff lined up with it. I was worshiping music. Didn't want to work in a church. And then years later, it kind of came back around. And it's like the best job I have. I can do music every single week That's and so art and graphics. And Are you worship so, leader yeah. of that church? I am one of the worship leaders of the church. So my boss, Andrew, he is the head worship leader. And then I'm underneath him and I support the digital media and photography, videography, uh, take some graphic design projects on sometimes and social media. So it's like, a whole bunch of different things. That I got so everything that I want in like one little package and get to serve the church, which is awesome. So, all right, I have so many. I I know stuff. I like Dude, covered so my whole life there. We've like yeah. chatted. Yeah. I don't even know half this stuff. Okay, first. Oh, no. Okay, I I gotta re I gotta recover Go after this. Okay, one that job sounds like so much fun. Like working at church and like doing all that stuff. Like seems like so. Much. That's like your full time job. That is my full time job. That's so dope. Yep. That that's awesome because like you get to spend time. I'm sure songwriting, I'm sure working, like doing rehearsals, working on your craft, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like you get paid to do that. Yeah, yeah. Which it's is a amazing. huge blessing. And it never feels like that too. It's never like, oh my word, I'm here to like collect a paycheck. I'm just doing something that I love and it's part of my life. It's always been a part of my life. It's yeah. part of my faith and I get to pour into other people and work with youth kids and stuff like that and train them up. Because I remember like I was in junior high when I started doing this. So, you know, I get to work with those kids yeah. and I get to work on on my craft and just make like you know, excellent music and excellent worship for the church and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, I have the freedom to do other things at the same time because there's so there's so many people in the church and everyone does different stuff. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, like, it seems like from the beginning, like, you had a lot of people, like, really pushing you and, like, really supporting you in this. Like, how did that really, like, affect you? Like, it seemed like your mom was like, we're going to do this. Like, we're going to make this happen. I, I kind of want to know, like, are your parents – musicians musically inclined no so they they both did marching band in high school but they will they would tell you they're like no one in our family is musically inclined my my dad's side has some musicians but yeah nobody like really took off with it and wanted to pursue it um it was it was more m me my sisters played a little bit too yeah. but my mom's like he's definitely gifted and he's gifted in the arts like i want to push him in this direction and then there's you know like five people i could rattle off that really cultivated and pushed me yeah to kind of go into the next level and stuff like that yeah it really seemed like you had a lot of people on your on your journey that like affirmed your calling which is like really really cool and like really 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 unique i feel like because a lot of people it's like it's like a, a lot of like a solo kind of thing yeah. which like oh, i just gotta believe in myself kind of thing and yeah people were like don't do it don't do it but really seemed like people are like yo you should definitely do that like how did that yeah. affect how you even like were like i'm gonna go to karen for like music and you like worship leading, all that kind of stuff. Like, how'd that affect your mindset of like having so much support behind you with that? Yeah, it was the, my parent, both my parents are super supportive of it, uh, especially like later into high school and then trying to figure out what I wanted to do 
you know, they were like, you know, if you want to pursue music, like that's what you're gifted in. So go do it, you know? And my sister was already going to Karen at the time, Steph. Yeah. So I was like, this makes sense. I'm just going to go to Karen. It's close by. Um, I got great scholarship through them. I had a, a decent audition um, when I went. It was not the best, but uh, they were super gracious. And um, so I, yeah, I was willing to learn and all that kind of stuff. Because I had no theory background. At that point, it was all learning by watching and learning through the experience of it. And especially having like jazz and all these different backgrounds. Like you are forced to watch people play and adapt on the on the fly. Um, but yeah, everyone was like super supportive. I did have one person tell me not to do it. And that was like huge in my mind. He's like, I, it was a do it at church. And he's like, you need to have a fallback. He's like, there's no shot. You're going to make it anywhere. You know, even just doing music, it sounds fun, but you need to have like a fallback. Yeah. And I was like young, I was like a sophomore in, in high school and I, yeah. I had no idea what big world was. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he told me that and it like kind of floored me, but I s worked through that. I'm like, I know I'm going to go to school for music. I love it. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm going to make it happen yeah. and just see what doors open up. And yeah. clearly there's been a lot that have opened up that I did not think that yeah. we're going to open and it's been the best thing. So yeah, it seemed like you had enough voices saying do it. That one voice is like not going to completely <laughs> yeah, crumble yeah. your dreams and yes. like your thoughts behind it. Yes. Dude. Okay. That's wild. I really, I think you would have like, you would have survived, like thrived and survived I think I so well. Too. I think the thing is though with Nashville, I definitely agree with his, with his, um, with that guy that told you to go home. Mm -hmm. Like, I definitely agree with that. Mm -hmm. Cause I had a stint where I was like, I'm gonna go to Nashville. Sure. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna really, really work at it. But like, as I even like was reflecting and hearing from other people, it's like, like, I, for personally, I felt like God was opening up a lot of opportunities here mm -hmm. to do music, do other things like that creatively right. that to develop me. That was like, going to Nashville was like completely just like blank slate. Sure. Which sounded really fun and cool. But like, in hindsight, it's like, it actually was a blessing because for me, it's like, and everyone's different, but for me, it was like building here. If you establish where you're at, then you'll like, when you go there, it's like, I actually can like go there with like a right. foot forward instead of being like, Hey, help. I want, I want to do this. And like, you're working at like an odd and ends job. And yes. stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, I, I feel like if you went down to Nashville now, you have, you have a wife, you have a good like career here mm -hmm. and you can just like fly multiple times down there, start getting your feet wet. And then you can really, like, if you want to transition, you can transition, like, well. Not just, sure. like, I'm just going to throw myself at it. Sure. Which is, like, I think that was great yeah. advice. Yeah, it was. I've actually since seen that same pastor. Um, we do an East Coast Pastors Conference at Calvary Chapel of Philly. Yeah. And uh, there's, like, thousands of dudes that fly in for this. And I'm, like, sitting in their coffee shop and being a coffee snob. And I, like, see this guy. I'm we'll get like, to that. We'll get to that. I'm, like, <laughs> that's Pastor Chris. And I'm like, I need to go. Like, I haven't seen him since before COVID. It was a weekend. It was like a three day, you know, yeah. weekend quick trip. Like, we're gonna go down to Nashville and we're gonna see what they got down there. And I'm like, no way, this guy remembers me. And he's got this little southern twang. I'm like, hey, Pastor Chris, do you remember me? Like, I'm that kid from Philly that came down years ago. He's like, oh yeah, you that kid, man. And like, how you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm good. I'm like, I I took your advice. I came back. And uh, I'm working for the church now. Like, that's what I ended up doing with my life. And I love it. And he's like, oh, praise the Lord. And we, like, prayed and all that kind of stuff. And it was, like, one of those things, like, full circle, seeing how, you know, I wanted something so bad. And yeah. the more that I chase it, the more I put the blinders on to what God wanted for my yeah. life. And uh, I think I said this at the beginning. I've been able to do more music things now yeah. than I did before. I'm have more people and you know different musicians and stuff like that that are in my sphere of influence now that I would have had if I would have thrown myself down in Nashville or if I would have went out to LA or something like that. Yeah. And the freedom to do it, you know, cuz that's another thing too, like you, you have a full-time job, you have a wife, you have like things going on and like trying to invest and do music stuff is like difficult, yeah. but all those people that I'm friends with who are incredibly skilled musicians they're all doing the same thing. Yeah. They're in that same boat, but they still love the craft. They still yeah. love getting in the studio. They still love going to perform and stuff like that. And uh, they're just good people, you know, yeah. and they they love the craft of music and they really care about it. So, yeah. That's awesome. So I want to kind of switch a little bit. Do you think if you had moved to Nashville, LA, whatever it is, do you would you have met your wife? Because I want to talk a little about you got married you're saying it's been a year or almost a year. year? It's been a year. So 
your life would have looked very different potentially. Yeah. So how is marriage going? And then do you think you would have actually met your wife now? Or would that have been like, this is just like God was like, hey, I want you to stay around because you're going to find this girl. No, yeah, I don't I don't think. I, I have those moments in my life. I'm like, if I would have gone down this path, I would have not met this person. Or I would have yeah. not done this. So I think like my wife, me meeting my wife uh, is totally one of those things that if I would have chosen the other path, like we would have never crossed paths and wow. we would have never met each other. So, and like I said, my blinders were fixed on it's either LA or Nashville, one of the two. I'm not going anywhere else. Yeah. Um, no New York. No New York. Taylor like, Swift did it. Yeah, I guess I guess T Swizzle did it, but uh yeah, New York's I like New York, yeah. but it's definitely so, not for me. So it was either Nashville or LA. It was either Nashville yeah. or LA. Yeah. I said Nashville is like more of the country vibe, more the rock vibe. Um LA's got more pop. It's yeah. got more like, you know, R and B, hip hop, you know, that kind of stuff going on, which I love. I'm a huge pop guy. And uh so it was like it was one of the two. And then like I said, all those doors closed. But if they hadn't closed, I would have never met my wife, my now yeah. wife. Um, and she's a minx. So, yeah, marriage is going well. Her name's Kayla. We were just talking about this before. My oh, yeah. wife is South African. Yes. Um, so, you know, going through that whole process of learning, you know, their culture. And I don't even know the full extent of it because I've never been there before. Yeah. Um, Did their family come to the wedding? No. Oh, so wow. her cousin, she came as an au pair. So that okay. was her job. So she was like a stay-in nanny. And um, she was living here, and we met at a bonfire. We had met before. We'd met at a young adults before in passing. Like one of my friends was like, "Hey, here's this girl. She's from uh, she's from South Africa." I'm like, "Oh, cool." And she totally dressed different. Like she didn't yeah. dress American. Like you could tell she was just not from here. Yeah. And then like a couple weeks later, we met at a bonfire, and I'm like, "This girl's got like a cool British accent. That's like kind of sweet." <laughs> Let me start asking her dumb questions. I'm like, "Have you shot a rhino? Have you done all these?" <laughs> stupid dumb things and uh natural like american things ask <laughs> yeah i was just like i don't know why that's just my humor i'm like just trying to it. troll her see it. if she'll laugh at things and uh yeah we went we went rock climbing on our first date and i at the time yes, i was working you know. coffee my boss was like you know my brother met his wife rock climbing and that was their first date i'm like yeah yeah whatever and then you know it just kind of like came yep. full circle so yeah marriage is amazing um we're going on one year now one year and a month that's awesome. um as of, I don't know what today is, today's the 12th uh, or whatever we're recording this. So, yeah. We're, I don't even know what today is. I don't even know what today it's is right. either. It's the but, second, uh, March 2nd. March 2nd, <laughs> yeah. So, we are um, just a little over a year, and I've learned so much. Marriage is one of those things, like, you just, you learn, and there's things that you you don't see and you don't expect. Yeah. Uh, and then when you're both living in the same space, like, you have to you have to work things out, and you have to stay involved, and you have to stay involved with your friends and your family, and just have a really good, healthy balance. Because um, if you go too heavy one side, it could be bad. If you go too heavy the other, it could also be bad. But she's amazing. She's got, like, the most energetic electric personality. Uh, just goes up and talks to random people because that's just what she wants to do. Yeah. Puts her cell phone down. Like, that's, like, garbage to her. She's yeah. like, I just want to talk to someone. I just want to get to know you. Um, just, like, super personable and just fun and bubbly. So, yeah, she has a lot of energy into our life but yeah man she's awesome. That's awesome is she musically inclined no she doesn't do any music we're, we're going through her and i have been like we sing a lot in the car like obviously yeah. who doesn't oh, of course everyone oh, of sings course. in the car and uh she's trying to figure out how to sing harmony so that's what we've like, she's that's like did funny, i sing this well funny. and i'm like yeah you did sing that well and you know i'll tweak her and adjust her because my ear is just like yeah. bent to yeah. hearing <laughs> pitches and stuff so I mean, uh, honestly, that's how I learned to sing harmony was yeah. like literally just sing with other like like with music and like, oh, they're doing this part. I'm going to sing that part. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she's developing that right now. And I don't know if she she says she's like, when are you going to let me on the worship team? When are you going to let me on the worship team? <laughs> like, well, you have to audition first. You got to do all you this stuff. You don't have stuff. an in. Come on. Yeah. I'm like, everyone else has to go through the same process. I'm not just going to let you in. But yeah, she's been developing that skill. And she's getting to the point now where she doesn't need my help to find pitches like We'll, we'll put a song on and she'll start singing the harmony. I'm like, yeah, you got it. Go. You just keep singing. So, yeah, she's learning. That's so cool. Yep. Dude, that's so awesome. I'm so glad to hear. All right. I want to trans transition a little bit to coffee. Yeah. I want to touch on coffee yeah, a please. little bit. So, you said you are a connoisseur. Yeah. Of coffee. I'd say I'm a, I'm a very... What's what's your what's your history with coffee? Give me give me some deets. Dude, on in college, I, I didn't drink a sip of coffee until my freshman year. Um. Doing all nighters, you're like, 
play the cello. You're like, I need. Oh more. yeah, just shredding on the cello, <laughs> working on my on these Bach pieces. I needed something to keep me up. Uh, no, I had a guy. I was like, dude, I hate coffee. I had a bad experience with it when I was a kid. My grandma was like, you want a sip of coffee? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And it was like the most disgusting, repulsive thing. And uh, I had a I had a friend, and he's like, try this. I drink this at Wawa. It's like three quarters, you know, creamer and like one quarter coffee. And I was like, okay. I'm like, oh, this is really good. It's like super sweet and like way too sweet. And uh, I just kept drinking it more and more and more and didn't think I was going to get into coffee, but I just had this weird, you know, something about sitting down in a coffee shop and like, you know, there's a, uh, there's a vibe and an atmosphere about it. I'm like, I really like this. So um, kind of developed my palate more and then went into that. I worked at Backyard Beans in Lansdale. I don't know if you've ever been there before. Uh, yes. Yes. I, it's familiar. Probably, I think I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome coffee shop. Awesome people. Um, I had amazing coworkers at the time. It was a really cool group of people. And uh, I was getting into just drinking espresso, yeah. and which is like the far end of coffee. Um, drinking espressos and learning everything, learning how to texture milk and do all these different things, do pour overs, like make things. Like there's an intricacy to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, oh, yeah. I'm very tactile. Like I like building. I like working with my hands. I like drawing and art and stuff like that so i think coffee was like the extension to that it's like this is a very meticulous thing yeah and you have to understand you know how a coffee bean reacts and works and does all these things and uh yeah i just like developed it i bought an espresso machine for our house and all that kind of or for our apartment and uh yeah, dude. I just like I went so neck deep into it, and I keep telling my wife, I'm like, I want to roast coffee. I'm like, that's my next like, <laughs> you know, passion. I'm like, I want to get into roasting coffee and do something, you know, in it in the house and sell bags to people or whatever. You know, no, you maybe QR up. my code, my music, or open a business. So there's music and coffee going on. Legit. I don't know, but I think it would be such a cool thing. That'd be so, so dope. Yeah, it is. I okay. Honestly, full disclosure, I don't drink coffee. Okay. I've never got it. We can't it. do this interview anymore. So I'm just going to leave. <sighs> All right. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the thing is, though, I never found a taste. Like I've never really enjoyed it. Okay. Um, we have to have the lights go off. That's okay. No, we're chilling. We're chilling. We're chilling. Um, got a little moodier. Oh, this yeah, is, this is, this is really intense That's now. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so I've never had coffee. No. Um, I'm a tea guy. Okay. I've never needed coffee in the morning. It's never been like something that I've enjoyed. Okay. If I was gonna, if I was gonna want to have coffee, what would you start me out? Not something strong. Um, there's schools of thoughts. If you, if you had a light roast coffee, like if you were gonna drink it black, and you're like, I just need something to wake me up. Light roast has more caffeine than a dark roast. Okay. When you roast a dark roast, you get to a certain point you really can't roast it anymore until it just catches fire, and uh, it has taken all the oils and the things that give it caffeine out of it. Um, but I would probably start you with like a latte or something like that. That's okay. a good balance of like you're getting espresso with milk. If you like sweet things, if you I definitely sweet, like sweet things. If you sweeten your tea a lot, you know, you could do a, a nice latte and put some sort of flavor syrup in it and stuff like that. After a while, I think this is maybe this is just a mental thing. After a while, you start not wanting the sweetness anymore. Like now I'll drink it straight black. Really? And this is like a developing is that like thing. a purist kind of thing like no not really i'm just like <laughs> i i went from like drinking like straight creamer yeah. with no coffee to like now i just want it black like that's how my taste palette yeah. has developed so refined so, so refined. it's so refined right now <laughs> um yeah i would i would probably start you with something like that because you get sweetness okay and you get a you get that coffee flavor because coffee smells good i haven't met someone that's like oh i hate the smell of coffee see but I the don't... taste the lights come back the lights come back oh <laughs> no, it's fine. It's, we're good. It, it's now we're in a positive. Now state, we're yeah. yeah. Now we can be positive. <laughs> Look at and this happy again. Guys. Yeah. Look at this, guys. Um, um. Okay, you were saying. Sorry, you were saying. I cut you off because the lights went on. That's fine. We got the hallelujah lights back oh, yeah. on. Um. Yeah. If you tried a latte and you tried it with some sweetener and stuff like that, eventually, if you keep drinking that and you like it and all that kind of stuff, eventually you'll probably start to want to drift away from the sweetness. See, yeah. I just don't have a desire. That's the only yeah. problem. Yeah, I don't have a desire to. Maybe we'll change that. We could try. We'll we change try. that. I've tried. Take I've me tried. summer in Westchester, man. I'll find a good shop okay, and we'll I'll, I'll we'll change your mind I, about it. I will give a. I've never given a full like try at it. I've always been like, ah, 
Like I naturally have so much energy in the morning. That's like, I just wake up. I'm like, I'm ready to go. Hey, God bless you, man. I Which wake like, up and I'm like, I've never I need needed a it. cup. Or I'll, else I'll, I'm I'll be have monster. tea. Like I enjoy my teas, my herbal teas, all that stuff. Okay. It's like very like yeah, basic, yeah, yeah. basic white girl kind of. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> but like I enjoy tea. I have never gotten in. Like I've done like the fake frappuccinos, like the okay. Wawa frappuccinos. Like, yeah, yeah. I could, I would not count that as coffee though, because no, no, it's like a free drink. Either. It's like a, it's a good time. Yes. Um, so I will, I will. Come up, to Westchester. Man. I will do Pick a full. I will try my best. Okay. To enjoy it. All right. Yeah. Let's do it. Definitely. Definitely. All right, man. We've we've actually hit a lot of these topics. So we're just gonna cruise on down to hobbies. hobbies. So you you were saying that you like to do stuff with your hands. Yes. You like to. So there's a little bit on Instagram mm. where people can DM you, get some custom work, which I kind of mm-hmm. want some custom work, some spray paint. Yeah. It's pretty dope. Yeah. So I want to know a little bit about that. So you got some hobbies on. You love coffee. Yes. You do music. You do spray paint artwork. Spray it's paint it's artwork. dope. Um, we'll put it up on screen. It's like it's like outer space kind of vibes. Yeah, yeah. That's one of those Get things. Get me into that a little bit. If you go to New York City and you're in Times Square and you're walking around and you see all these people trying to sell you random trinkets and stuff, oh, yeah. you'll probably find a dude that's doing spray paint art, right? That's, oh, yeah. That's one of those things that you'll find in Times Square. Um, it's random piece of glossy paper spray paint you're using like just pieces of trash and garbage to make texture and you're using bowls and plates to make these planets or whatever that for me stems from my graffiti background so you know like oh that's when the lights go out again (laughs) again. graffiti graffiti so we've actually we've got some police right outside (laughs) (laughs) what (laughs) um yeah i i grew up graffitiing um legally Ah. um Legally, we need legally. To put legally. Yeah, so you can put the legally, clause right yeah. there. Legal graffiti. Um, no, my parents, again, the art and the music thing, they were kind of hand in hand. Yeah. And uh, they gave me free reign over the garage. They're like, graffiti, spray paint, do whatever you want. Like so I would clear everything out. I'd make my dad angry because I'd get it on stuff that he totally didn't want me to. <laughs> but I would just practice. I'd practice doing graffiti and practice texturing with spray paint. And it was probably garbage at the time because I was young. Yeah. Um, but that really transitioned into this spray paint art thing that people do now. Um, and in college, I was doing that to make money. <laughs> so I was dope. working. I was working for a church. I yeah. was working in the cafeteria. And I'm like, you know what? I can sell art too. So I was like spray painting in the in the art studio. And they didn't like it. They'd come in the next day and be like, it smells like spray paint in here. Who was it? And I was like, it's me. Um at least you yeah. moved up to it. You're like, hey, that's me. Yeah, I did. I was like, you know what? Uh, my artwork? This is your sp- Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 20 bucks, you can buy this. But I did. I I sold. I would like tube them and everything in my dorm, and then I would ship them out to people that, so dope. that wanted them. You still do yeah. it? I haven't done it in a while. I'm getting back into graffiti a little bit, but more on paper and just enjoying like markers and stuff like that. That's so dope. I did go down. There's a place in Philly called Graffiti Pier. I don't know if you've heard of Graffiti Pier before. No, I haven't. Yeah, so it's right off. It's near Girard Ave uh, in Philly, like right outside of Fishtown. And it was like a I, coal yeah. pier or something okay. like that. Um, it used to not used to not be allowed to go in there. Now you can. They've turned it into like a park. Um, but it's like this big, you know, pier, big concrete pier. And people go and graffiti all over it and stuff like that. So they put swings and trash cans. And they try to like make it a little bit nicer. But um yeah, I've done some graffiti down there and stuff like that, just for so fun. Just like I'm gonna go graffiti because like, so I'm bored. So, yeah, yeah. So do you still take requests if people? If somebody <laughs> requests, DM'd you so saying, my Yo, so I here's want... the other thing. I my personal Instagram I don't have anymore. I got off. I got off that. Um, yeah, I was actually trying to find you on Instagram. Yeah, like, I was like, he? I was did like, he block me? Now I gotta go to Facebook. I, got, <laughs> I know, and Facebook's like the old people thing now, and now it's like. All on, but yes, that Instagram account is still alive. I think I called it like the Black Book Project or something. I'm like, I could come oh, up with something, yeah. something cool for people to find me. If I'm someone DM me, I would definitely, I would make something for them. Okay, for sure. I might so, DM you. Yeah, later today, I'm gonna oh, get yeah. like a thing. Right now, look, it's Christian. I look. need a uh, a twenty by twenty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> for my so. uh, for my house, dude. That's dope. That's so cool. Yeah. Hey, you got a lot of you got a lot of cool hobbies. A lot of a lot of hobbies. Dope. Yeah, I need to slow down. I have too many. No, that's that's way dope. too many. That's so cool. Yeah. Dude, all right. Well, we're gonna start closing down, but we're gonna play a game. Okay. We're gonna play Never Have I Ever. We got three questions for you. So you can say I have, I haven't. You ready for it? I'm ready for it. Let's yeah. do it. Let's do the first one. So never have I ever. So you just got married recently. Yeah. Sometimes there's like 
Things happen. You have sisters. Have you ever called one of your sisters your wife's name? No, like, I have not. I'm sorry. No? No, I haven't had a mental relapse and called one of my sisters my wife's name. Never done it. Have it, has it been reversed? Have you ever called your wife your sister? No. No. That's I've good. Okay, good. we're clean. We're clean. Yeah, All mentally right. I'm pretty clear That's on that good. area. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay, we're clean. He's good. All right. In your, I think it was Facebook. So you don't have Instagram. Your Facebook. You wrote a Lambo. I did. And at first I was like, dude, this guy's balling. I was like, yeah. and then I read the caption. I was like, okay. You just wrote it for the day. But I was like, dang, he's my Lambos now? Yeah. Okay, so. Story behind that, you you rode a Lambo. I, yes. I pretty much just answered your question. Yes, so. I won't disclose any any names of the person because the person doesn't want people to know that he's got this Lamborghini. But um, yeah, people DM me. They're like, you bought a Lamborghini, man. You're making it big. I'm like, no, I rode in a Lamborghini <laughs> and I'm taking a lot of pictures with it. Um, I have a buddy and um, one of his family members has this Lamborghini and I'm a huge car guy, another hobby, into cars and chopping up my Honda Civic and all that kind of stuff. Just quick, it, did he go to Karen? No, he did okay. not go to Karen. I was going to say, I was like, he was like we had a, a slight guy. connection, but I was like, maybe I would do yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay, yeah. keep, keep I'll continue, continue. his number. <laughs> um, no, so I, I had a friend, and he was like, hey, uh, one of my family members has this Lamborghini. I know I've told you about it before. Do you want to come ride in it? And I'm like, absolutely. Like, no, like get everything else off the schedule. I'm coming to ride in this Lamborghini. So, um, yeah, his uh, his family member pulls it out for us, like full exhaust kit on it. It looks it's nice. wrapped it's and everything. He, I think he got it wrapped from from the guy that previously had it. And uh, yeah, we had 120 miles in like a not even a quarter mile, and I was like terrified. I'm like, if You're we hit a tree, seat. oh, in the seat, and I've never experienced something like that ever. Um, and I've been in some fast cars, but yeah. that that thing was it was crazy. It was an 04 Lamborghini Gallardo or a Gallardo, however you say yeah. it. And uh, yeah, it was it was wild. He's like, "Thanks for letting me do this, man." He's like, "My wife won't let me go that fast." And I'm like, "Yeah, no problem." <laughs> but I'm like, "If we wrap a tree, we're both going straight to heaven, man." So at least it's with you. But yeah, it was cool. We got to de like detail and clean the car and all that kind of stuff. We ended up jumping it because the battery died after oh, we. Drove I've heard it. that they they do have some problems yeah, like that. They do, but that's mm -hmm. so dope. It was so much that's fun. A, dude. One one yeah. of my goals I'd love to do is take some nice cars to tracks. Yeah. Just rip around tracks. Yeah. I know there's some places around here, but yes. like take some Porsches, take some Lambos and like, yep. that'd be a vibe. Yeah. That would be tons of fun. That's so cool that you did yeah. that. Yeah. That was awesome. Man. Yeah. One then, in a lifetime. Dude. That's so dope. So the last one, never have ever. Have you gone skydiving before? No, I've never gone skydiving. Never. My wife's bungee jump. That's the closest that okay. anyone that I know has been to doing something crazy like that. I don't have a huge fear of heights. Yeah. So if someone asked me to do it, I'd be like, yeah, absolutely. Let's go skydiving. Um, we're planning when we go to South Africa, hopefully to bungee jump. It was off a, um, cause they don't do nuclear power down there. That's why they, oh, interesting. yeah, they don't do nuclear power anymore. Um, so they have like shut offs every single day for like three hours. The whole country is blacked out. Um, which is crazy, but yeah, yeah. they, one of their nuclear power plants, they like painted it up and they put this bungee jump thing right in the middle of it. So she's done that. That's wild. But no, I've never done this. Skydiving. Dude. I would. I mean, absolutely. I want to. We might have to make a whole day. Westchester skydiving. We'll go coffee. And coffee. It's a bro date. Dude. It's a bro date. We might have to do it. All right. We'll make, All right. We'll make it on. Because yeah, I, I want to go skydiving. And I was like, if he has it, we're going to make that a bucket. Put it on the books, man. Yeah, Dude. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You heard it first. We will go skydiving. Going skydiving. Coffee and skydiving. That'll be a good. Do we do that before or after? Take a coffee shot and then. Oh, I don't know, man. If you got nothing in your stomach, you're probably going to barf. So. Yeah, we'll save it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. That'd be dope, though. That'd be dope. Yeah, that'd be cool. But, anyways, to close out, dude, I appreciate you being here. This has been so much fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. So much fun. Any new music coming out? Yeah. Been so, on a little hiatus. So, yes, I have been on a hiatus. Obviously, getting married is a huge responsibility yes. that changes, changes everything. Um, if you're watching this podcast, there will be a new song that I'm going to play today. Um, that has not been released yet. So, um, yeah, two songs were on my EP from a year ago, and then one new song we'll, we'll do today. Okay. So, yeah. So the music, it, will it be this year, mate, that you'll release this? Uh, song? Yes, I okay. hope so. I hope so. I just need to get the stems back and get it all mixed and mastered. So. Oh, so it's like already, it's already recorded. It's already recorded. Okay. Yeah. So it's not even like in the beginnings. It's like, it's like. It's official. recorded. Do you have yeah. a rough date of when this, you're looking to get this out? No, no, no. I was trying to get the stems a little while ago and it just didn't work out. So yeah, it's kind of a toss up right okay. now, but maybe summertime. It's a, it's like an eighties kind of summery vibe. Okay. So yeah. What would you, for this, this song, we'll hear it today, but inspiration behind it. Who, who are the people that you kind of like inspired 
by like oh or this sound that you're like I'm going for this sound. There is this dude. Uh, I don't I don't know how many people know him. His name's I'm Not Shane. He's an artist. His name is I'm Not Shane. Shane. Okay. And uh, he has this song where he basically took memes and the memes were the lyrics that he used to write the song. But it's like this very like. Um, Four on the floor, yeah. pop, drives, moves, got these really like lush synth sounds and stuff like that in it. And uh, that was like my inspiration uh, when Kayla and I first met. We were listening to that song like all the time. That's so dope. On repeat. Has some yeah. yeah. So that and not really like 1975 vibes, but there is like some guitars and, and stuff like that yeah. in it. But it's just like it's very forward and four on the floor, like happy kind of. That's so dope. It's like pop song. So. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's dope. We'll have you on when it when it we'll have you back on when it releases. When it releases, yes. When it releases, we'll come back and we'll do an official. We'll do a little something. official thing, dude. Yeah. Dude, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Thanks um, for having me. For people that want to get to know you a little bit and to follow your journey and know when you're releasing new music, where can they find you? What socials? Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, I don't have my my main Instagram anymore. Um, I'll definitely use my Facebook a lot. YouTube, I'm trying to kind of move things over okay. there and be more present on uh youtube in some way shape or form i don't know how that all is going to look out um so yeah youtube uh facebook you can find me on spotify you can find me on apple music almost every single yeah. platform you can find me on other than instagram right at the moment yeah so it's all just if we just search like josh wentz yep. like anywhere you'll find yep mm -hmm. perfect yeah sweet all right thank you so much for being on thank you guys for watching and stay tuned because after this josh is gonna be playing a couple songs original songs so you want to stick to that? Yeah. All right. Peace. Everything about you, nothing could replace you. Sweet like sugar cane. I forgot my first name. Don't put me in my brain. Spinning like hurricane. What could I do to make you stay? Tell me I'll make a way. Loving you is not a cliche. Love's like Novocaine.